Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the next uh, embedded firmware talk, uh, which would be about the Beats and Chipsec. Uh, this was uh, previously presented on Open Source Firmware Conference 2018 in Erlangen. And yeah, so we will talk about uh, motivation, be motivation behind uh, building Chipsec and uh, uh, Beats payload. Uh, what kind of feature set Beats and Chipsec has? Um, what what took to enable bits and chipsec as payloads in core boot and then uh, we will probably show some a small demo on mino board how it works right now uh, okay so um, demo will be presented by Michal and and I will talk a little bit about uh, feature set and and uh, bits and, ch and chipsec so yeah so what's the motivation be behind this effort so we have to think about how we really validate quality of our firmware. So for sure we, we can say that open source firmware uh, right now does not have enough validation. We need more validation, we need more security checks. Uh, we believe that uh, firmware security is more about validation, verification and formal development process. And of course ChipSec uh, project and its effort uh, behind those configuration checks and behind those uh, like platform verification is great stuff because gives opportunity to OEMs to just quickly verify if the platform is correctly configured. Uh, of course, there are um, uh, bits and chips are well recognized frameworks for, for validation for verification of firmware quality, but uh, also there is something like Linux UFI validation. Uh, which is Intel project. Uh, this is Yocto based Linux distribution which contain chipsec, bits and various other tools to just quickly verify if UFI implementation is uh, at good shape. And we would like to have something like that in core boot. Uh, and best would be not to introduce new Linux distribution but do that just directly from payload. So yeah, and there are also some companies that, for example, do certification like medical certification or automotive certification. And in those use cases, those companies would like to have kind of validation payload uh, that is put on top of core boot, which uh, during manufacturing process, we have like some uh, verified, validated uh, core boot ROM. And just for sanity checks, we add our payload, which can clearly check if nothing changed and there is no problem uh, with running application. Then we remove the validation payload and underlying core boot is verified. And we put on top our, let's say, automotive or medical application. In that way, we can certify our firmware and make it uh, um, like a quality solution for uh, really production uh, medical devices or automotive uh, industry. Uh, why we should uh, avoid running our tests from operating system? There are many issues with operating systems. First of all, um, with like uh, hardware vendors and firmware developers, maybe not all of them because this is kind of controversial sentence, but but I think we should treat the operating system as a as a customer of firmware which is kind of external. So we have various operating system, systems like various Linux distributions, Windows, and all, and all that stuff. And we should treat that, uh, that everything that those operating, uh, those operating systems needs to run correctly, firmware should deploy uh, and prepare the platform to, to be used. Um, and unfortunately, firmware is treated by hardware vendors and, and whole industry as a part of hardware. So you're buying hardware, you expect firmware is integrated and works kind of like uh, it, it, it works and can, you can do with the hardware whatever you want, install your favorite operating system. And the problem with OS is that it can introduce additional point of failures. For example, uh, can modify ACPI tables, can modify other tables that are exposed by firmware. And if we do the validation in operating system, we don't really know if this is the fault of the firmware or, or this is the fault of, uh, of Linux or any other operating system. So because of that, we want to eliminate operating system from uh, validation process and do the validation clearly on our firmware. And in, in following presentation, 
uh, we would like to share our experience with enabling bits and chipsec as validation components on clearly on top of uh, core boots running directly from SpyFlash and this would be done on, on Mino tu Turbo, Minoboard Turbo platform. Okay, so what we should test? Truly, we should test everything that that firmware may expose. So those are typically some tables, like clearly first what we have in mind is ACPI, but there is also SMBIOS which can cause some problems if incorrectly, uh, for, let's say if it's incorrectly present uh, platform name, for example. So drivers are not loaded uh, in correct way. Uh, for given platform. Uh, multiprocessor tables which also expose some information for uh, let's say for some RTOSs it is important to have correct multiprocessor table exposed. This is kind of PR, uh, PIR uh, table is kind of old stuff so it's like dying technology but still some legacy systems uh, uh, require those, those table to require that this table is exposed. Um, in UFI based uh, ser um, systems, runtime and boot, uh, and boot services are exposed by firmware and those can be source of security problems or those can be source of um, some features that we should verify if work correctly. Um, yeah, and probably there are other structures, that, that, uh, there are some configuration things which we want to check like uh, if we have our spy protected, if we have correctly configured um, uh, SM, SMRAM protection and various configuration things that really in production environment we don't want to have. And there are also other things like we can, for example, check if our microcode which was loaded uh, fixed the spectra issue or um, we can check if some kind of um, dangerous features are exposed, like USB DCI, which was proven to uh, give JTAG uh, level access to the system, ME, PSP, which are like a kind of security components, uh, but can also lead to some problems uh, with, with the quality of firmware and with stability of the platform. Okay, so what's, uh, what's BITS? BITS is uh, uh, it's abbreviation for a BIOS implementation test suite and truly it is just modified grab plus Python scripts, like a huge set of Python scripts. Um, and that's that's really neat idea that we have uh, Python inside the grab because we're just running the bootloader and we can write Python scripts which and use all the libraries from Python. So that's a great thing. And uh, bits, uh, bits uh, integrate couple couple things. Uh, first, it validates ACPI um, system management range registers, which define uh, what kind of access uh, we have to uh, system management memory. Um, it can test uh, latency of system management interrupts. Um, it can verify multiprocessor table. It can check various MSR, MSRs. And typically it is, it is used from uh, USB, so you're building bits, you're getting ISO, you're flashing this ISO to USB stick, and, and you're just plugging this in your, into your PC, and you have uh, bits running during the boot, if you're booting from that USB. And those, uh, those results of those tests, because it's happened quite fast, can be stored on, uh, on this USB, and you can analyze quality of uh, what, what's going on with the platform and how good is the, is, is firmware? So um, it, it it also you can choose also some entries from Grab if you want to do select some specific test. There are two modes like batch mode and and manual mode uh, which you can use. Um, yeah. So through Python we can add an additional features, and because uh, and yeah. So so what's the problem with putting bits as a payload? First of all, the size. Uh, native size was uh, 45 megs, and of course, like this is not suitable for SPI flash. Uh, but uh, when we uh, cutting this thing into pieces, uh, we can we can limit the size. Uh, um, w if we remove various things, let's say bits have support, for example, for EFI. So if we remove 
uh, EFI support, then we significantly decrease the size of, uh, of bits. So just by, by using just the core, uh, which is just plain grab plus Python module, uh, it gives us ability to, um, to put it into the spy flash. Yeah, I will tell a little bit more about the size later. Um, Unfortunately, development environment is not exactly user friendly or developer friendly, um, and each modification truly requires reflashing SPI flash, which is kind of time consuming and, and, and problematic. But there, there can be some solution for that because we have Python, uh, we may have networking stack in, uh, impl um, initialized, and using various features which are inside grab we may think about using network uh, boot to uh, deploy the scripts that we're developing remotely uh, and of course we can type live in python so we're just running python interpreter and just typing live for testing some things in in the system um, yeah so key problems with bits it's like last, last release was 2016 and uh, tools are already outdated. Expectations of grab and various bits components are that you're using old libraries and, and compiler. And because of that, we, we just used a Docker container, which is with old distro and old compiler just to make it work. Yeah, so Chipsec. Uh, Chipsec is, uh, is, is a, a security assessment framework written in Python. Um, and what it can do is uh, check, checking for it's checking SPI for correct configuration. If correct write protection is configured, it can check uh, SMM and, uh, and and various other uh, like SMI cache uh, SMM cache positioning and various other SMM related vulnerabilities. It's this framework was designed in a way that you writing test for given vulnerability, yeah, and then you checking if, if the system is vulnerable or it's, it's fixed. So it can verify integrity of, of flash descriptor uh, for Intel platforms, uh, check various things like MSRs, uh, check uh, uh, protection for uh, system management range, range register. Uh, also, there are various other things like IOMMU, TPM related stuff. And, and much more. And of course, it's extremely extensible. It's written, it's written in Python. It's very modular. And um, as we talk on open source firmware conference with uh, Chipsec maintainers, they're planning to add even more. They're planning to port, uh, to have various vendors, not only uh, Intel. They're planning to port stuff to MicroPython. So that's good things that we will see soon from Chipsec. OK, so how it was with enabling bits? Uh, as a uh, as a payload, um, yeah. So first of all, we decide that we will not use exactly the same grab as in bits, but we will utilize the uh, infrastructure for building grab in core boot uh, because it already fixed some problems. It already works, and and we just had to. Uh, Add couple couple things from bits. So first of all was this grab uh, string cut uh, function um, disable some support for uh, floating points arithmetic arithmetics which makes things uh, much smaller um, and some small fixes to print f uh, argument parsing um, that that was all that we really need from bits and. Uh, then th there was a port uh, of Python support from um, uh, from the bits grab to to our grab in um, in in core boot, yeah? So then also some adjusting to to build system and probably the most important was the is dir hack which uh, is related with file system and looking for various Python files and of course we are on spy flash we don't really have kind of file system then we have to like a cheat a little bit to uh, so um, so Python knows where the things are um, and then also also some uh, serial enabling and compression to make things uh, as smaller as possible so these were the key uh, things and uh, then when we had really Python plus grab which is bits and plus some set of uh, Python scripts uh, then 
uh, we decide that, okay, we have ChipSec. Yeah, ChipSec is in Python, so why not put ChipSec into the spy flash and, and run it? And yeah, and we worked, and this didn't work like out of the box, but after some work, uh, it happened that it is possible. And yeah, so yeah, we just added some missing, uh, missing libraries. Um, and then the key point was to implement implement Beats uh, OS helper, which like um, Beats OS helper in ChipSec. Uh, each like uh, platform has its own OS helper. Like Linux, Linux has its own OS helper. Windows ha has its own OS helper in ChipSec, which is kind of a glue between uh, ChipSec uh, abstraction and the system. So we needed this kind of glue to convert between uh, functions that operate on hardware which are already implemented in Beats and make it visible in ChipSec uh, through Beats OS helper, uh, OS helper layer. And this is something that we want to contribute to, uh, to ChipSec project and this is uh, ongoing work right now. Yeah, so, yeah, so that's, that's what, I, what I told you already. And some, some things about the issues about the size and issue related with optimization of uh, size. As I said, like uh, just removing UFI support and, and kind of related stuff uh, caused like a significant uh, decrease in size. And then compre applying compression uh, was, was even more. Of course, this like between the lines were much more, but these are key points uh, of, of decreasing the size. And 3.6 and three, three and, uh, megs is something that we can already integrate in SpyFlash. This is how um, CBFS or core boot uh, file system look like uh, after integration. You can see our payload here. Uh, it's like 3.6, 3.6, and yeah. So that's, that's okay. So I will give the mic to to Michal so he can explain a little bit about the uh, architecture. Um, so uh, I would like to present you the architecture of all project, uh, how we did the integration of the chipset to this and bra. So uh, basically uh, we took uh, chipset uh, Python source files and uh, co copied them to the, uh, to the uh, bits uh, directory of, which contained the Python script itself and uh, how it is uh, passed to the graph. Um, the bits uh, a result, the result of binary bits is uh, the whole environment which contains the uh, compiled by Python uh, test scripts, compiled by Python, along with the Python runtime libraries and uh, graph contribution uh, dependencies, which are then uh, passed to the uh, graph payload, which was previously uh, integrated in core boot tree. And how it does look like. Um, the whole BIS environment is uh, embedded into so called uh, MEM disk, uh, which is an uh, equivalent of a uh, boot partition, which would be normally seen, for example, on a SATA disk drive or USB drive. So it kind of emulates the, the boot directory of the target uh, boot disk. And it contains the boot configuration, which is a normal uh, graph config, uh, which is generated from bits, and the Python module built from the Python runtime libraries from bits and the precompiled uh, Python scripts. And also there are some dependencies, like I said. They are uh, ACPI component architecture or libffi, libfwm, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, then it's everything compiled into one payload and passed the core boot humor image. Um, now, some demo time.
voting results uh, do look like. Uh, I, I decided to paste uh, the summary here for, um, for better uh, comparison. So uh, for the Bay Trade platform, which is the uh, micro architecture of the processor on my board turbo, there was uh, 17 modules in total, which only four passed. Five modules failed, for example, memlock, BIOS, WP, SPI access, SPI descriptor, and SPI lock. And some modules uh, are uh, reported as not implemented because they are not supported on uh, this uh, SOC. So uh, the newer uh, SOCs probably will support more uh, modules. And the uh, time elapsed uh, was uh, 2.7 seconds. So it's kind of uh, impressive. Um, summary. Uh, so um, the bare metal micropython support is kind of important uh, from the firmware perspective. Because, like uh, Phil said, we would like to um, avoid the validation in the OS level. So the MicroPython support would be a very, very important thing. Uh, and uh, nowadays we have very, very, very little uh, validation in the firmware. Uh, it lacks much, much more uh, automated uh, validation. Uh, and we should uh, utilize uh, uh, existing tools that were, all, uh, that were um, already improved in the industry, like the chip cycle. So that's why we integrated it into Corbett. Mm. What we do plan to do with the source we developed. Uh, and the sources are available on FreeMD GitHub already, and we plan to uh, send the patches upstream. Mm. We also uh, considered porting the Descent Chip to MicroPython um, and we'd like to uh, port the support for AMD platforms, for example, to uh, launch the Descent Chip on the PC Engine's APU platforms. And uh, yeah, the code is uh, still in some kind of dirty state, so we would have to uh, fix many, many bugs and misconfigurations. <coughs> 